What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to use some extensions to create kind of a glass lattice skyscraper. Um, this is loosely based um, on a building, actually more than loosely. This is based on a building that got proposed in New York City. I don't think it ever got built. Um, it's the Halo building, um, but I thought it would be a good example of kind of how to use Lattice Maker and a couple other tools to create kind of a glass skyscraper. Before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the Mindsight Studios Winter Sale. So uh, Mindsight Studios are the guys that bring brought you the uh, extensions like Placemaker and Artisan and Profile Builder, so everything from organic modeling to smart profile creation, that sort of thing. All of their stuff is on sale through January 15th, I believe, at 25% off. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out the link at thesketchupessentials.com slash Mindsight. I'll also link to that in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple images of the building because what the what the images of the building will show us is they'll show us a few different things. So the first thing we're going to look at is basically the structure of the lattice itself. So if you look at the structure of the lattice itself, um, basically what this building has is it has a whole bunch of vertical rows that are split up into like uh, vertical and horizontal glass mullions. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to extrude a circle straight up in order to create that. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get we're going to do kind of a count of uh, the number of segments in the circle so that we can set our circle up to um, give us the right number of mullions. And so there's roughly 18 verticals in this. Um, so 18 vertical mullions in half of this. So we can assume that this is going to be basically a 36. This will have 36 vertical mullions. And so what we can do then is we can use the circle tool to create a circle with 36 segments. So what you're going to do is you're going to tap the C key and uh, that's going to activate the circle tool. And then you see in the bottom where it asks you for the number of sides. Well, what we're going to do with the number of sides is we're going to enter the number 36. So I'm going to type in 36 and hit the enter key. And so what that's going to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete my default model out. What that's going to do is that's going to draw a 36 sided circle. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to push pull that up. And so in this case, this is probably a pretty good shape. Um, we're going to go ahead and say that it has a radius of, we'll say 75 feet. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to push pull this up. And I'm not sure exactly how tall this building was or how tall this building was going to be. So we're just going to push pull this up and we'll push pull it up to a height of, we'll call it 500 feet. And it probably in reality is like double that. But for right now, that'll be fine. We just want something that gives us kind of the same proportions as what's been drawn. And so if we were to turn on hidden geometry and look at this, this is going to have basically 36 vertical lines running up and down. So this circle was made up of 36 segments, and when we extruded it, created a whole bunch of different lines in here. Well, now we want to split the rest of this circle up into the number of vertical mullions. And so we're going to do a count of those real quick. So there's approximately 15 of the vertical mullions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom piece. And right now we don't want to use um, an extension to create our lattice on here because it's not going to look very good. Um, because if we were to do that, in fact, I'll just demonstrate it. If we were to take, we're going to use the extension Lattice Maker, which I'll link to in the notes down below. If we were to take Lattice Maker and tell it to go ahead and uh, do this extrusion, um, what it would do is it would just break every one of these up into a single mullion. So, would, and uh, that, that doesn't work because that's not the way that you build giant curtain wall structures. You need to have the horizontals in here as well as the verticals. So what we need to do is we need to split this up so that your mullions are in here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the base of this object and we're actually going to use the move tool in copy mode in order to do this, but we're gonna do it in divide mode. And so what that means is you're going to take this base piece and select it. You're going to use the move tool. So tap the M key and you can see if I click once and then move my mouse, it moves this up. But if I tap the control key, it puts this in copy mode. And if you remember, we've done this a lot in multiply mode. Well, what we want to do now is we want to use it in divide mode. So I've single clicked to move this up and I'm just going to move this up until I get to this point right here. 
So that's tell that's me telling it the endpoint. And then before I click on anything else, I'm going to type in divided by 15. And so when I type in divided by 15, what this did is this came in here and this divided this up into 15 lines. So it created 15 equally spaced lines between this point and this point. It may have created 14 and then counted this one as the 15th. But in either case, you can see how now what we have is we have a shape that's broken up. And so with our hidden geometry, now if we come in here with Lattice Maker and select this and run Lattice Maker, and we'll go ahead, click glass, and we'll hit OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to do an offset and create glass in each one of these instead of doing it on the tall, long piece. So, and that's going to take a little bit longer. You can see how that took a lot more time. But now if we zoom in, we can see what we have is we have basically a lattice structure with glass on the inside of it. And the cool thing about this extension is when it offsets this, it actually push pulls this glass back a little bit so it's actually recessed. So now we've got this lattice structure and I'm actually going to undo that because we have one more thing that we're going to do. And the thing that we're going to do now is we're going to use the extension Zorro 2 in order to cut this model. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn hidden geometry off and I'm actually going to create a section plane along this building. And so you're going to click on the section plane option. You can also find that in the tools section plane option. And you can see how this kind of jumps around a little bit. If you tap the up button on your keyboard, it'll lock this to the blue axis. So you can see what this does is this creates a section cut of this object. And so what I want to do is I want to rotate this section cut. And you can see how I'm not really locked to an axis right now. And I want to be locked to an axis because I want to make sure that I rotate this properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the right arrow key to lock me to the red axis. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find the center point. And I'm going to rotate this cut just like this. And so you can see how when I rotate this cut, that'll give me an angle of my cut. And then I can move this up and down to pick the actual angle that I want. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a section cut. Um, I'm not trying to be super precise with this right now. I'm trying to get a section cut that about comes down to this point right here. Um, so I'm trying to cut my building so that it kind of intersects with this point. And so that'll give me the kind of cut face up here that I need in order to create the rest of my building. And so now that I have a section cut, what I want to do is I want to use the extension Zorro 2 in order to slice my in order to slice my model along this section plane. So that's what that extension does is it'll cut your your uh, model. And so I'm just going to right click and this gives me an option for slice model at selection. And when I click slice model and selection, now if I delete out that piece that I just created or that um, that section plane, you can see how I'm left. I'm left with this building that's been cut along this angle. And so now we can go in and we can create our lattice. But one other thing I want to do, because if you look at this building, is it has a series of kind of emissive lights in here. And I want to kind of recreate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the basically the edge or the circle along the top of this, and we're going to make a copy of it. And I'm using the extension quad face tools. One of the cool things about that one is it'll select edge loops. So if I click the select edge loops option, what it'll do is it'll select this entire loop along this edge. So I don't have to go in here and or mess around with trying to find um, the right geometry or anything like that. I can just click on this point. I can just click on the edge loops. And I'm just going to move that off to the side for a minute. So I'm going to make a copy of it with the move tool in copy mode. So now I've got a copy of this object over here. Now I'm going to save my model before I do anything else because um, we're starting to deal with more geometry. And anytime you start doing anything complex in SketchUp, you should always save before you do anything else. So I'm going to save this model real quick. So the other thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to make a copy of this base. And I'm going to make that a group. And that's just so I can come in here and create the actual base of the building a little bit later. And then I'm just going to delete out this bottom piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the extension Lattice Maker to come in here and add our glass. So we're just going to select this whole thing. We're going to go to Extensions, 
lattice maker and I'll link to that in the notes below and it's gonna ask us for a few different things it's gonna ask for the width of our mullions the depth the pane inset and the thickness of our glass so in this case um, I'm just going to leave that as is. We'll see what it looks like. We're also going to select a pane material of glass. So, and these other things I'm not really super interested in. I may go ahead and try this with the gray color for the lattice material because that's kind of more the color of what, um, what the curtain wall mullions usually look like. But so I've got all of these objects selected. I'm just going to click OK. And that's going to take a minute to come in here and that's going to create our lattice kind of like we did before but it's going to look a little bit different because we've got our top piece along here so you can see what that did is that came in here and that created our actual curtain wall lattice so now we have kind of our skyscraper building and so um, that that's how you would generate kind of a general shape like this well now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create the kind of glowing pieces because probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in Inkscape and see what it looks like. Um, you could stick this in another rendering software as well. But what I want to do is I want to create the series of rings and I want to make them emissive materials. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this loop and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to make that a component. And we're just going to call this a light ring. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a series of copies of this. And so I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So select this component, tap the M key and click on this corner, and then tap the control key and move it down. And so once I've moved it down, I've made a copy of that. I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip it. You could also use the mirror tool to do that. So I'm gonna flip that in place. And probably before I even do that, actually, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give this some thickness. So one of the things that we can do, and I'm going to start off by welding this. So welding this will just make this a smooth curve, and it might make, make my extrusion a little uh, smoother. But we're going to use something like extrusion tools, and we're going to use extrude edges by vector. And basically what that allows us to do is that allows us to take basically a line and extrude it into a series of faces. So in this case, I'm just gonna click on this line using the extrude edges by vector option. Click here and you can, you can still lock your inferencing. So in this case, I'm gonna tap the up key. I think you can lock your inferencing, maybe you can't. Um, you wanna move your mouse until this is going kind of straight up and down because I want to extrude this straight down and I'm gonna give it just a little bit of extrusion. So probably in this case, we'll just call it three feet. And it's going to ask if I want to reverse the faces, and the answer is no. Explode the extrusions group, the answer is no. So basically what I've done is I've created a ring by extruding that down. And so now I'm going to use the move tool to create a copy. And I'm going to flip that with the scale tool. And then I'm going to move it straight or I'm going to move it back so that these edges are kind of joined right here. And so I just want to move the point until the points touch so that it's kind of smooth. And so I've done that once and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make another copy, but I'm going to select both of these. So I'm going to select them both. make a copy straight down and do the same thing. I'm going to move it so these points are together. And I'm actually going to type in times two and hit the enter key and see what that does for me. So that created another copy of that. And I had one too many, so I went ahead and erased it out. But you can see how I've got this series of rings in here. And this is a little bit taller maybe than I want it to be. Um, that's okay for what we're doing here. Um, if you wanted to, you could take this bottom one and kind of scale it up a little bit to kind of make it fit um, inside this piece. But what we can do now is we've moved all of this off to the side. And the other thing I'm going to do, and this is an InScape specific thing. So if you use a different rendering program, you may want to do something else. But if you remember, these are all components. So if I edit them, they'll all change at the same time. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a material and I'm just going to call it emissive so I'm just gonna call it white emissive and I'm gonna hit OK and all that's doing is that's a white texture that I'm applying to the faces 
in this object, and I'm going to apply it to the backside as well, so that the backside is also emissive. But all I did is I applied a material, and when I put the word emissive in it, Inkscape picks up that it's supposed to emit light. And so now I'm going to take all of this, I'm going to select this point, and I'm just going to move it back along the green axis. And you can see how since I did that along the green axis like that, um, it's very easy to move it back. So as long as you move things along the axis, you can use inferencing to kind of put them back and forth. And you can see how this bottom one was just a little bit too tall. I'm just going to use the scale tool to kind of fudge that up just a little bit. And so now what I've got is I've got this skyscraper piece with my emissive light rings. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and like I said, I'm not super concerned at the moment about the base, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a solid base. And so I'm just going to double click in this group. I'm going to use the offset tool to kind of offset it out. And you can probably erase this line, but I'm just going to push pull this down so that I have kind of a solid base. And if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could add all the other stories and everything else. For right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it as is. And I'm just going to take it over into Inkscape and see what it looks like. So you can see how we've got our skyscraper with our mullions and we've also got our glass pieces. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key and then click and drag my right mouse button. And what that's going to do is that's going to take me to nighttime. And you can see how as I get into nighttime, since I labeled those as emissive materials, what it's doing is it's generating light. And one thing Inkscape isn't quite doing yet is they haven't really set up the emissive materials so that um, it's reflecting on these other lines very much. So that's something that everybody's still kind of waiting on. I think they've got kind of a material editor coming out. But even that, you can see how you can use this to create this really cool, um, this really cool kind of dusk scene. And I may mess around with this a little bit more to see what other kinds of renderings I can create, but you can see how using that emissive material, um, you can generate this. That's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you find it helpful? Um, can you think of some things you want to do with Lattice Maker or some applications, this kind of thing? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.